Every October, Austria's Ötztal Valley hosts the Adidas Sickline Extreme Kayak World Championships. Over 150 of the world's finest whitewater slalom and freestyle paddlers come here to take on the infamous Velleborka Rapids. In recent years, one man has reigned supreme on these waters. 25-year-old New Zealander Sam Sutton has triumphed at the event on the past three occasions. The sick line's definitely the highlight of the season. It's the World Championships. It's what everybody wants to win. It's the, uh, the most professional race that we have in the uh, kayaking community. And uh, everybody's eager to uh, put their name on top of it. Nicknamed the Eiger North Wall of kayaking, the Vellabrugger Rapids are one of the most difficult whitewater sections in the world. The Sickline course is 200 metres long with a gradient of 10% and competitors must negotiate a series of challenging obstacles, including the daunting TNT Rapid and the infamous Champions Killer. At last year's fifth edition of the Sick Line, Sam was once again the quickest paddler through the treacherous waters, overhauling his compatriot Mike Dawson on the final run to secure that third straight title. I really enjoy the Sick Line course, the Vallabrook. It's kind of similar to my home river. It's a nice deep river. I can put my paddle in, use a lot of power and it's also quite technical. I always just try to make sure I don't get my head wet through the race, so I'm just trying to keep the boat as high and dry as possible, and that's the fastest way to kayak. Sam grew up a stone's throw from the Kaituna River in the Bay of Plenty region on New Zealand's North Island. Along with his brother Jamie, who is also a kayaker and sick line competitor, Sam spent much of his childhood on the river, water skiing and rafting. Remarkably, he didn't take up kayaking until he was 16 years old, but he knew he had found his calling from the very first stroke. Nowadays, Sam splits his time between his hometown of Okiri Falls in New Zealand and travelling the rivers of the world with his kayak. Transworld Sport met up with him in the Austrian town of Ertz, the home of the sick line. For the outside viewer, when you look at a river, it looks the same and you're like, oh, that must get boring after a while. But uh, when you go to California, you're dealing with just really amazing granite rock and quite low volume rivers. And then you go to Africa and you're on this river that you couldn't even imagine there's so much, so much water in it and you're just really feeling the power of what the water can do. So there's quite a lot of diversity in the rivers. So every location has a different, different appeal of, and different style of kayaking. In 2011, Sam set out on his most ambitious expedition to date. He and a group of companions went looking for the most spectacular white water on the planet, known in the kayaking community as the River God. Their journey took in countries such as Iceland, Russia and Mexico, often leading them into uncharted territory and extremely dangerous rapids. One of my highlights has been Altai and the, um, the Altai Mountains in Siberia. And we're just a thousand kilometers from civilization, just in these extremely remote rivers. And um, you actually feel like, like the earth is empty at that stage. Not a plane in the sky, nothing. And that's quite a special feeling of just coming back to nature and just living a simple life. While Sam has been accompanied by other top paddlers on expeditions in the past, nowadays he's more likely to be joined by his girlfriend Katerina and their baby daughter Lily. The couple met back in 2008 whilst Katerina was working in Okiri Falls. She was eight months pregnant when Sam won his third sick line last year.
Lily's arrival could have been a challenge for Sam and Katerina's nomadic lifestyle, but she too has embraced life on the road and has become a welcome addition on their travels. <laughs> Hi Transworld Sport, welcome to our home away from home. This is our uh, Volkswagen Multivan and it uh, services us for about six months of the year. We spend um, around six weeks at a time in the van and we do about 40,000 kilometres a year. And here we have our sleeping quarters, this is our bed. Uh, the back seat kind of folds down into a nice bed and three of us actually, three of us lie across in the back. It's um, a little bit cosy, but uh, it's quite nice. This is my favourite part of the whole van, it's this um, dining table that comes out of the uh, side door and that makes it for uh, quite a nice homely feeling when we're out on the road away from home for a long time and it kind of uh, gives you a little bit of a home comfort feel. Then come over to our kitchen. I mean it's a little bit smaller than most kitchens but it uh, does, does the job and uh, we can actually cook up some pretty gourmet style meals. I'm pretty sure Jamie Oliver would be out of a job if we weren't uh, on the road all the time. That was our crib. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, maybe we'll see you on the road. Sam claims that being a family man has given him even greater motivation when racing. This year will be Lily's first experience of Sickline, but two people who are well versed in watching Sam compete are his parents, Neil and Patty. Both spend a lot of time on the water back in New Zealand and encourage their sons to try out a variety of water sports as youngsters. He doesn't stress before a race, he's very relaxed, but I think once he gets on the course he's very focused and he's got the ability to, to read the water because he's not super strong physically when you look at some of the slalom paddlers, but uh, yeah, he's got a, he makes the water a strong for him. mental ability. Yeah. With Sickline 2013 coming up next month, Sam will once again be the man to beat. Already this year, he's won races in France, Italy and Norway, as he bids to continue his run as the king of the Vellabrucker. Despite Sam's unprecedented success in the sport, extreme kayaking still lacks a mainstream following, and there are limitations on what even the best paddlers can achieve in the discipline. Competing in the Olympics in slalom um, has definitely crossed my mind more than once and I've, I've contemplated dropping everything and just trying to go for Rio. You see a lot of the slalom kikers, they can actually make a reasonable living from it, especially if uh, they're meddling, meddling, they're quite high profile athletes and that would be, that's quite a draw card. For me though, slalom just kind of is in these man-made courses in the middle of a city. It's not really why I'm kiking and it would kind of, uh, I think it would just do my head in a little bit too much just to be in one spot in the middle of a city going around the same course. Um, I think I like the expedition style and being out in, on a real river dealing with real hazards and a real environment. Having left silver and bronze medalists from London 2012 trailing in his wake at last year's World Championships, there's no reason why Sam couldn't be a contender for Rio. His immediate focus, however, is securing yet another victory in the event which made his name. The pretenders to his sickline throne had better beware. Sam Sutton is in no hurry to give up his crown.